Hi there, welcome back to the channel. In the previous episode, we took a journey from the plain English description of full conformal predictors to their formal definition and ended by stating that the problem with full conformal predictors is that because they require refitting the underlying model for every plausible value and test point, they are computationally expensive. This episode relies heavily on the concepts discussed in the previous one. So make sure to watch that episode if you haven't already. And even if you have, a refresher on those concepts is recommended. Let's better understand the computational cost problem of full conformal predictors and see how we can fix it. Imagine a regression problem similar to the one we had last time, where the square represents a test point, a point whose label is unknown, sometimes also called validation point. The value that the square has taken on the screen right now is just one plausible value in the range of all plausible values. Consider the bank that contains all points. I emphasize all points, including the square with its latest plausible value. To measure the non-conformity of each point with the bank, which, as we discussed last time, is the foundation of what conformal predictors do, a model is fit on the points inside the bag, and then the non-conformity of a point, for example, the square with its current plausible value, will be the absolute error encountered by the model for that point. Note that the color of each point is linked to its absolute error, high error red and low error blue, because right now the square has the highest error, it gets a very red color, while the other points are blue or bluish. On the right, we have our conformity ladder, where the vertical axis shows the rank of each point in the sorted non-conformity array. That is, the higher the non-conformity of a point, the lower it sits in the vertical axis. The horizontal axis shows the non-conformity values, here the absolute error of each point. It is evident from the left plot that the current plausible value makes our square stand out in the bank, very different from the other points. And our method of measuring non-conformities, that is, fitting a model and measuring absolute errors, has successfully taken that into account by putting the square at the bottom of the ladder in the right plot, outside the top 90%. So the current plausible value will not be included in the 90% prediction interval. Next, we need to try all the other plausible values, that is, move the square along the range of plausible values, because for a regression problem, the range is continuous, it has to be discretized, and then all the discrete values need to be tried one by one as a plausible value. Note how the square moves up in the ladder as it gets closer to the fitted model in the left plot. And moves down as it gets away from the model. The plausible values that put the square at the top 90% of the ladder are collected into our prediction set for the test point, the square. It should now be obvious that having to refit the model for every 
tried plausible value and test point is what makes these full conformal methods computationally very expensive. Is there a way for us to avoid refitting the model? The reason we need refitting is because our bag includes the square. So every time we try a new plausible value by moving the square, the bag changes. And since the model is fit on points inside the bag, we need to refit the model. How can we go away from this situation? The first idea that may come to mind is to exclude the square, the test point, from the bag, so that moving it does not influence the bag anymore. But this is not a good idea because it will result in the points inside the bag having lower absolute errors than the square and thus unfairly increases the square's non-conformity, especially when the model is more complex than a simple line. To see this, let's fit a high order polynomial instead of the line and note how the non-conformity of the points inside the bag, that is all the points except the square, decrease but the non-conformity of the square increases. So making the square the only point excluded from the bag, thus not seen by the model, lifts the burden of a refitting, but puts the square at a significant disadvantage against the other points in terms of its non-conformity, and we should avoid it. Otherwise, our prediction sets will be too narrow to satisfy the coverage validity condition. What we can do instead is to exclude more points from the bag used for fitting. In other words, use only some of the points to fit the model, that is the white empty dots here, and use all the other points, the filled dots, to construct the ladder and to compare the non-conformities. This is exactly what split conformal methods do. They split the data into a training set and a calibration set. Use the training set to fit the model and only the calibration set to construct the conformity ladder. In other words, to compare the non-conformities. Now that we are familiar with both full and split conformal methods, to make sure that we fully understand their difference without leaving any stone unturned, let's put the two methods side by side and compare their behavior as we examine different plausible values for the test point, the square, by moving it around. With full conformal methods, the model is fit using all points including the test, which means moving the square will change the model, whereas with split conformal methods, the model is fit on the training set only and not on the calibration set or the test point. So moving the test point around does not change the model, which means model needs to be fit only once. With the full conformal method, all points are used in constructing our conformity ladder, and their conformity varies as the square is moved around, whereas with split conformal methods, only the calibration points and, of course, the test point itself are used for constructing the conformity ladder. Alright, that will do it for this episode. 
in the next one we will discuss how to implement these methods on a real data set until then thanks for watching and see you next time